Maitreya's coming as the Christ Lord, Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ Lord, Lord of light within our sight Coming as the Christ Lord Maitreya Coming as the Christ, Lord, Lord my Treas coming as the Christ, Lord, Lord of light within our sight, coming as the Christ, rejoice. Yes, all of humanity, rejoice, for Lord Maitreya has come as the Cosmic Christ. Sent by Sanat Kumara, also known as Gabriel, the bright and morning star, and Blessed Mother Venus, Maitreya has joined with celestial supporters and workers to fulfill a magisterial mission on Earth, which began in earnest on March 20th, 2017. Lord Maitreya's mission will unfailingly transform our dark star into freedom star to become a shining beacon of light radiating the Universal Father's light and love throughout the universe of universes. Lord Maitreya, for this tremendous work, we thank you. Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ. Lord Maitreya's coming as the Christ. Lord of light within our sight, coming as the Christ. Rejoice. Michael, would you please let us know the time and the date? Yes, the time is 10.02 p.m. The date is October 13th, 2017. And we are up here on our upstairs patio mm -hmm. outside in our beautiful home in Mission Viejo, Southern California. United States of America and we have five chairs set up Diana's on my left and we are facing out away from the home we have three chairs that are in front of us that are facing the home 
Directly to Diane's left is the dining room chair with the uh, gold painted scroll work on the top. In front of both of us is the King Tut throne chair. And to the right of us is the leather covered desk chair. So we have five chairs up here tonight. Um, we welcome all of you here tonight to our beautiful home. And uh, this also coincides with our worldwide prayer circle for world peace. So we will hope that everyone will open their hearts to receive your message of world peace. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, this meeting is at 10 o'clock. Uh, we were originally scheduled for 9 p.m. Pacific time. But when I asked about the meeting, they said that at 7 o'clock they would all be here. And I said, oh, well, maybe we could have the meeting early at 7. And they said, no. And then I said, well, maybe by 8? That would make it easier for us, for Michael and I. And they said, no. And then I said, well, 9 is the scheduled time. Is that going to be fine? And they said, no, the meeting is pushed to 10. That they were having meetings from 7 to 10 in the great room here. And there were 30, with, with us included, 30 celestials that are here right now. So there were 28 of them having meetings up until 10 o'clock. And so we waited until 10, and now we are here. Uh, it's quite dark out, but it's a beautiful evening. Yes. The weather is perfect, although I think there was a little sprinkle of something. <laughs> so we've had to put uh, new pillows out. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but uh, we are here, and um, the three in front of us, of course, um, I will start to the right, and of myself, and in the desk chair we have Maitreya. We have our Lord Maitreya, Paradise Son, who is the sovereign of this earth, and also the fifth Buddha, and also the last Buddha for this world. We welcome you, Maitreya. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You seem to like the desk chair a lot. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. Uh, in our center chair, we have a Melchizedek that we also have been meeting quite frequently now, uh, to our joy. And this is the Melchizedek of truth. We welcome you so very much. We're Welcome. sorry that we're just a little bit crowded here, but we want to be close to be able to have a little light to write, for Michael to write everything down and, and uh, still keep things dark. Uh, we understand that the other celestials are in the great room behind us, mm. and they are waiting for the meeting uh, to begin. To my left, is Sirius, who is the goddess Demeter, and she is a paradise daughter, and she has been officiating for the Universal Father in Paradise for worship services. So she's been very busy doing that. And now she's very interested in coming here to our planet, to our America, to our state of California, to our city of Mission Viejo, and to our home. She is still the goddess of fruits and grains, and she wants to share her love of the healthy way to live through her fruits, vegetables, grains and nuts. So, healthful living is uh, 
her creed, <laughs> and uh, that is why she had told us at a previous meeting that she is coming. We want to thank Melchizedek of Truth so very much for being here and coming to so many of our meetings. Uh, we know that his truth will permeate everything in the world and everyone and he has told us he will be going to all the churches and the mosques and the temples and spreading his truth to everyone there and of course we're hoping that will filter out to everyone in the world so you um, are wonderful Melchizedek of truth mm -hmm. we do thank you and honor you thank you for coming tonight and thank you for letting us be a part of this evening. We know that you've been meeting for over three hours here and um, the celestials are waiting in back of us for this meeting to really begin. Okay. So, I guess the first thing is, this is Matreya's fourth message, mm -hmm. I believe. Is this the fourth? Fourth visit. Fourth visit and fourth message. Uh-huh. All right. All right, that's why we're here, I presume. <laughs> and of course, um, Ceres, she's here to express her message also tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. And of course, we know the Melchizedek of truth. We know his message is <laughs> truth. <laughs> so, um, Matreya, would you like to start? You do not. Melchizedek of truth, would you like to begin? You would. He would like to begin the meeting. He wants to always tell us that he loves us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get such beautiful love from this Melchizedek of truth. Mm -hmm. He is always eager to say that he loves us. And uh, we love you too. Yes, we love we you do. too. Mm -hmm. He always... Um, expresses his love so beautifully. You really feel it. Thank you. He does want to continue to speak. So we will be quiet for a minute and hear what he has to say. Right now he's uh, standing in front of us. He is standing and he's putting one arm out and now the other arm out. Both arms out in front of him. And he has one palm over your head and one palm over mine. Thank you, Melchizedek of Truth. He is giving a blessing to us and to the world and to everyone on the earth. He is giving thanks to Maitreya, to Ceres, to all celestials in the Great Room, but also to every celestial that has been a part of this mission so far, and also to those who have been supporters of Maitreya and the Paradise Sun mission. He is giving thanks to the local universe father and the local universe mother. He is giving ultimate thanks to the infinite mother for her beginning some of the parts of this mission which began many, many years ago and thanking her for setting up some of the programs to have everything in place as they are now. Mm. He is now seated. Thank you for that blessing. We all appreciate his thanks. Thank you very much, yes. Melchizedek of Truth and thank you for blessing the world and we also say that we thank Maitreya 
we thank all of these celestial helpers that will be uh, uh, helping our earth and its people during this magisterial mission. We also thank uh, the Infinite Mother for bringing Diana and I together mm -hmm. <laughs> for this wonderful project and, and work mm -hmm. that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we thank the uh, Infinite Father, and the Universal Father, Universal Mother, and all of the Celestials whom we have met, uh, that we will meet, and uh, that are uh, doing their wonderful work at this time. So we thank them also. We bless your work, and uh, thank you for blessing our work as we work together. Thank yes, you. Yes, that's lovely, Michael. Thank you. Melchizedek mm -hmm. of Truth is saying that he wants to especially thank all of the churches, mosques, and temples that are in place now, and all the people that are gathered in them. He wants to thank everyone who officiates in these temples, mosques, and churches. And they are his primary source for his truth message that he wishes to give out. I know Michael has just taken another job in another church, so we are in two churches now. <laughs> and that was, at, I believe, the instigation of um, the Celestials and perhaps also our Melchizedek of Truth. Mm -hmm. And also the Infinite Mother, we mustn't forget, and the local universe father and <laughs> mother too. Mm -hmm. So many are offering their suggestions to us. So we have begun that and we feel very honored to be carrying your message into two churches now. And hopefully uh, we may be having a new radio program in November mm -hmm. and we may share some of your messages there too of truth. And we'll hope that will be successful. Yes. Series. Do you wish to speak? She does. She does. She's very excited and happy to be here. Mm -hmm. She is so happy that there are people that want to hear her message of healthful living through fresh foods, whole foods, foods that are healthy, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, grains, the nuts, and she has her symbol of the cornucopia, which is so lovely. And we have to tell you a series. We're doing our next video for YouTube uh -huh. with you. And maybe that's why she came tonight. I don't know, because uh, that's going to be the next one that we're going to be working on. Now, actually, tomorrow we'll be putting up the video of 10 celestials that we have met. Celestial musicians. Yes, and they're all into music. <laughs> and now tonight we have Ceres, who is into healthful living. Well, and as you probably know, Ceres, we have already been working on the project uh, in your name. Uh, we call it the Ceres Project. <laughs> <laughs> The script is already finished. Uh, we have a script ready to be videoed. Um, we're going to video uh, myself and Diane speaking some words, our script, our video script, speaking some words um, about the visit that we had with you yes. with the Infinite Mother Spirit yes. along with uh, other celestial uh, friends, mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about uh, your message of healthful living mm -hmm. and uh, the foods that will bring us vibrant mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. and new health and a new lifestyle for all the people on this planet. Mm -hmm. We are so excited to be able to share this mm -hmm. message with everyone because mm -hmm. we certainly benefit being vegetarians from energy filled healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, grains, 
-hmm. And also, we have the script ready, but <laughs> there's a special song that we have. Oh, yes. Called A Song for Series, that is a really beautiful melody about how you are a goddess, a paradise daughter. You are lovely, beautiful, graceful, and here to spread a message. Mm -hmm. And then, at some point, Diane will be uh, drawing you based on how you looked in our team meeting. We are so excited to do this project for you and for the world. So thank you. Thank you for being an inspiration to us. Cultivate in us 
to us. Oh, yes, yes. Um, it was so interesting when we did the meeting with Ceres because we were downstairs. They, they wanted us to be outside in the entryway of our home where we have a nice comfortable bench. And we sat there and we talked to you and the Infinite Mother and also, there were about 20 other celestials that were there at the same uh -huh. time. Yes. Uh, we didn't get to really interview them, but maybe at some time we will, and I'm sure we will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was interesting, too. We, we had a radio program soon after, and we told Hercules Invictus about meeting you mm -hmm. and uh, your name, uh, Demeter and Ceres. And he said, well, you know, it's interesting that the word serial came from her name, uh -huh. Michael. He told yes. us that, uh -huh. which we didn't know. So uh, I just wanted to inject that. And also, you've been telling me to be sure and have cereals in the morning. You know, sometimes I want to jump the gun and have a sandwich or something I'd normally have for lunch, you know, although I guess the, the bread would be cereal. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're always saying, um, let's just have some oats or some rice or some corn-based cereal, uh, in, um, even preferred to the wheat till later, have the wheat later, and have the corn, the rice, or the oats in the morning. So I've been doing uh -huh. that. And then at lunch, I'll have my wheat toast and, and sandwich uh -huh. type of thing, you know, later on. Hercules also mentioned um, one of the uh, pioneers of breakfast cereals. Oh. <laughs> whom we love, uh, <laughs> yes. John Harvey Kellogg, who, of course, was the, the protege of Ellen White. Oh, yes. Ellen Gould White, who yes. started the Seventh-day Adventist movement mm -hmm. and... John Harvey Kellogg was, of course, yes. instrumental in mentoring the, the initial group that uh, had in their hands the Urantia book papers, yes. uh, who would later, who would later mm -hmm. publish, publish the Urantia book. That's right. And, of course, the Universal Father has told Diane and me to, uh, you know, uh, work keep out keep of... working. Uh -huh. through the book. Work out of uh -huh. and work through the Urantia book and yes. the Urantia movement. That's right. So um, we have some Urantia book students and leaders mm -hmm. who are hopefully joining us tonight oh, during yes. this uh, mm -hmm. team meeting wherever mm -hmm. they are in the world mm -hmm. and also saying a prayer for world peace. Yes, yes. A prayer for world peace, of course. And I'm so excited to mention mm -hmm that I have a song for Ceres. As you know, mm -hmm. there's also a, I consider a wonderful song mm -hmm. for Maitreya. 
Yes, <laughs> we Matreya. have one for Matreya. You're here tonight, so yes, we have a song. Is. And then there is a beautiful song in honor of our Melchizedek of Truth, which oh. is in the works. Oh, how right wonderful. <laughs> oh, for one song for each one of you. How lovely. That's very, very beautiful. Well, yes, um, we are um, going to be thinking about sharing Siri's message of healthful living mm -hmm. with people. In fact, that could be a large part of our work. I know I was reading uh, a book just recently uh, by Swedenborg, and I think it was saying that everything that we partake of is from God. And so I think it behooves us to always remember to thank God before we eat our beautiful food and our grains too, to thank the Father and thank God for mm -hmm. that. And also to thank all the celestials that help to provide that. Yes. To make the planet fruitful and provide all the wonderful things for us. Yes, so many celestials do that. Mm -hmm. The Supreme which is the universal mother. Uh -huh. Yes, helps to make everything good. But uh, in light of talking about world peace, that brings me to Madrea. Madrea, I see tonight you are in your Hispanic body. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of thinking maybe you might be in your paradise body. Uh, we uh, saw that paradise body at the meeting that we had in the great room not too terribly long ago. And so now I'm in a quandary how to draw you. <laughs> so that makes it uh, different. Well, maybe but, uh, uh, draw both. Maybe do both, I guess so. <laughs> but tonight you are um, in your Hispanic body, so you look strong and healthy. <laughs> He's in a tan and brown tonight. He's not in uh, slacks, though. He is in a robe, but it is tan and brown. So we welcome you so very much. I'd like to say bienvenidos, <laughs> which is welcome in Spanish. Yes. <laughs> bienvenidos. And we understand, or at least we're thinking, that you have been very busy lately. <laughs> There's been so many things going on, and I'm sure that you are aware of all of them going on in our planet and our world, and people are kind of wondering what's going on. I don't know. I don't know how much you're involved in. You're involved in everything, I suppose. Everything that goes on in the world, all of you celestials I know are probably aware of, and a lot of you are involved. Are you involved in all of these radical changes that are going on right now, Maitreya, that we've been hearing about? He is. He is. He is. Oh, Some goodness. swamps that are being cleaned up, I believe, uh, politically, socially, that we notice. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of places have been mm -hmm. subject to hurricanes, fires, oh, so sorry. and things. So yes. people are feeling... Mm -hmm are feeling a lot of changes. <laughs> and I've noticed a number of people at my school have talked about, uh, you know, young families and, and some of the teachers have talked about that this coming Christmas will be a time where we really count our blessings. Oh, that's nice. It's a time that we yes. are really thankful for all of the blessings that mm -hmm. we have because mm -hmm. so many people are undergoing tremendous change and mm -hmm. upheaval mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you mentioned uh, all of the people thinking of uh, the, their trials, but we're coming into a period where we're going to be coming into the holidays and Christmas and December. And in Christmas, we, we want to be very positive and bring happiness and joy to everyone. And I know uh, we're going to be doing a radio program in December, and it's called Joy to the World. So in the midst of all these changes and transformations, we, we have to keep that, that level of joy within our hearts. And we want to bring the youth, 
the youth into that joy. We don't want them to get discouraged or afraid. I know we have two young people in our home, and they're 17 and 12, and, and they're getting to be um, quite young men, and they're hearing all kinds of things on the radio and television, and, and uh, we have to reassure them that life is positive, life is good, and everything is going to get better. <laughs> And, you know, if you look back a hundred years ago at 1917, you wouldn't want to be living there at that time. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, they were in the midst of a terrible war, world war. The people uh, did not have the conveniences and uh, all of the technology that we have today. So we have to understand that life will get better, that we know your plan is to make this world uh, the most beautiful, most um, joyful place to live and this joy I know you are bringing to everyone. We, we had a meeting just recently with uh, these uh, angels that we'll be putting up on YouTube tomorrow and uh, each one of them were trying to give us uh, such joy and happiness and and uh, then we had another meeting just very recently where the celestials were coming from another local universe, almost all of them, and bringing gifts to give to the world this December. Gifts of joy, gifts of music, gifts of choirs, gifts of light. Uh, each one of the celestials was giving a gift of light, different colors, showers of light and so we have to remember that the celestials are coming to give us gifts that they uh, want us to receive so that we will be able to uh, understand that everything is going to be better yeah. than it ever was. But mm -hmm. it seems to More me hopeful. that there uh, has to be a shake up first. I uh, guess so. Shake things up, shake the dust off a little bit. I guess so. And we've heard mm -hmm. messages uh, yes. in other meetings where mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. people at this time, mm -hmm. it requires people to uh, stop a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, evaluate their lives, yes. think of how they want their lives to be, mm -hmm. and how they'd like this earth to be, mm -hmm. uh, work toward that but take a look at ourselves, change our lifestyles, becoming healthier, uh, having healthier institutions, yes. healthier relationships with mm -hmm. each other so that mm -hmm. this can be mm -hmm. a fantastic place. Everyone can be joyful mm -hmm. and there can be mm -hmm. uh, peace and harmony. Of course, of earth. course. So we feel, Yes. I think that the people of the earth are feeling a little bit of a shake up uh -huh. at this time. Sure. Um, but sometimes it seems to me that's required yes. for positive change to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I always think uh, my great-grandmother passed away about a hundred years ago and I always felt so sad about that. She was such a beautiful woman, beautiful lady from the pictures that we have. I always feel so sorrowful because my great-grandmother passed away around a hundred years ago from yellow fever. She was drinking water out of the fountain in the middle of her town and a lot of the people in her town um, passed away from that, from yellow fever. So we have to remember that maybe it seems like things are really a little scary but a lot of these things will come about to make things better a lot of these transformations and we certainly uh, don't worry about yellow fever so much now do we? We have a wonderful water systems in our towns and cities here especially in America and in Europe and we don't worry about that now of course uh, in other parts of the world there, there still may be uh, some things like that going on but uh, certainly not uh, like my grandmother, great grandmother had to had to go through and lose her life from. So the things to come are miraculous. They're going to be miraculous. 
Well, we probably won't even believe it. I had a friend call me today and say, but you know, you, you say the mission will last 50 years. She said, I won't be around in 50 years, you know. And I said, well, that's all right, because um, the first 10 years is what's really important and where these changes will really be um, significantly made and things really in place. I, I would say probably uh, the first 10 years is really going to, we're going to pretty well see what's going to be happening in the future by 10 years. So I told her, I said, don't, don't worry, you're going to live 10, 20 years more and, and, and uh, you'll see, you'll see enough <laughs> of the Father's work. <laughs> so Maitreya, what else do you have to say to us? He says he can see the future, and that's really true. <laughs> he says we won't believe the things that will be happening in the next, uh, especially eight to ten years, hmm. especially, especially eight to ten years. So uh, he says we're absolutely right about that. And the happiness and joy for every single person on the planet is what he's after. He knows that we're sitting here and we're pretty happy and <laughs> we're looking at our palm trees and we're enjoying life pretty much. But And I don't have to worry about yellow fever from the, the town water fountain. <laughs> but um, he's saying that uh, life will be better for those in parts of the world that have not been able to have the benefits that oh. maybe America and Europe and South America and maybe Australia and some of these other countries have. Uh, of course, Asia has uh, done tremendous, uh, made tremendous strides in the last uh, few decades. So I hope uh, things can be better in North Korea. Oh, of course. Those, uh, oh, of poor course. people are suffering so much oh, under that so regime. So sorry. Yes, I just I'm hope sorry. things can be better for them. Yes, we pray for everyone in the world, yes. and I know you do, Matreya. I know you do. So, um, so thank you, thank you. I know you're working hard. Uh, are you enjoying your job? <laughs> no. <laughs> Being a human is tough, isn't it? <laughs> he says it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Has to be a human. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. We praise you for for taking that step into our world and um, trying to help with the nuts and bolts of everything going on. Thank you. Will you at some point be enjoying your job? Or uh, no. <laughs> it's just uh, tough. This is a lot of work to do. <laughs> is the planet that bad off that we really no. need your help this much? No, no. It's just that um, he prefers being in his celestial body. <laughs> So it's, it's requiring a great deal of uh, work and coordination to, uh -huh. to get this uh, project uh, yes. going? Mm -hmm. he, uh, he much prefers working in his own celestial body. <laughs> but uh, of course you were in a uh, human body in England. And did you like that? You didn't like that either. <laughs> okay. I guess we value our human bodies so much. We think we're so great, you know. <laughs> we think about you and and uh, the joy that you have and the love, and you don't have to worry about all these human traits and all our human horribles. <laughs> but um, so, are you? Um, I guess you're riding in cars and you're having to do all that. And are you been stopped in traffic or anything? No, not particularly. But some of our traffic does crawl a bit <laughs> during rush hour. <gasps> but you have an existence in places other than when you're in the human body working with this world, yes? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So what percentage would you say if I... If I may ask, um, what percentage would you say that you're in? What percentage of your existence in your work are you in this uh, Hispanic body working with this magisterial mission? Um, he's saying it's uh, less than one percent. Less than one percent. 
He's trying to really live in the human body as much as possible to put forth all of his energies into making all of these plans and uh, new platforms uh, successful. So he is putting forth a lot of his energy into this physical body. Uh-huh. But it's very limiting, he says. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, I guess, I guess we are in a limited body. <laughs> well, not, not really, I guess, if you count um, everything that we have within us, in so, our hearts and so forth, but so is that, somewhat restricted. <laughs> is that 1%? Less than 1%. Uh, less than 1% of, you said you were pouring a lot of your energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. How much energy are you pouring into that 1%? of your existence in the physical body. Is it less than 1% of your energy or are you pouring in more energy than just less than 1%? Well, he's putting 1% of himself into it. That includes energy and... Mm -hmm. Of everything. And that is a lot for him to give to this earth. That is a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot because he has certainly other duties and other work that he does. He is the sovereign of this planet, but uh, working with the people is what he's mainly doing in this physical body. He's actually working with the people, with physical bodies other than his own that he's taken. He's giving 1% for that, which is a lot. He feels that's us, a lot. Which to us, would, that would probably be tremendously immense. Of course, of course. Because you're probably, your whole essence is probably something that's bigger than we could even imagine. Of course, of course. Um, I know one angel I was asking him, I told you about this, we talked about it, uh, told me, I said, well, how how big are you right now, you know, while you're talking to me? And, And how big can you be? And he said, I can be so big that you couldn't see me and I could be so small that you couldn't see me. (laughs) That's kind of what my comment and question was based upon. Yes, we had an angel that came to us and said that. We're still trying to visualize that and wrap our heads around it. I'm sure for you it it would be the same, if not more, since we hear that Uh you are a paradise son and that's not just uh, an angel. Well, there's no way we say just an angel, but... But You know what I mean. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He is a paradise son, and for him to give this much to the people, he is the sovereign of the whole planet, and governing the whole planet, uh, a lot more is involved than just working intimately with the people. We have to remember that. And... and, uh, I would assume that doing a magisterial mission, something like this, mm-hmm. would go even above and beyond simply being the sovereign. Oh, of course, of course. He is given the responsibility by the local universe father to completely transform the whole world. And that's what it would take to make people in Africa and in uh, certain parts of, of Asia to give them the happiness and joy that they deserve and that they should have and that he wants them to have uh, as a, uh, a right for them to benefit from his work that he is doing right now to, to provide that for every single soul. All seven billion people is what he wants. He wants to enter the hearts of seven billion people. Now that is requiring a great deal of energy and he is going to try and accomplish that. He wants every person to at least share some of the joy and happiness that he is trying to bring to our world. That's a big job. But that is only a part of the job that he's doing on this earth. Oh, you mean as sovereign as or sovereign, as magisterial as mission? Sovereign, as sovereign, as sovereign of the world. He has other duties also, but at this time he's trying to concentrate on making world peace a reality for everyone in the world. He's trying to make that happen so that 
the people that feel left out of the world today and benefiting from the prosperity and the joy will finally have a little bit of their share and that is a part of his mission to bring that to those who don't have it today and there are some that don't have a real happy life and, and a life for future happiness and hope hope he would like to bring some hope to those so he would like to bring hope to those less fortunate absolutely he really would he really would now actually a lot of this work is done in his other bodies his celestial bodies and not just in this physical body that he has uh -huh. but you asked about the physical body and that's he's saying he's putting uh, about one percent okay so that. you are spending some energies on an inner level not just in a physical body working with oh, other people of course. Of course. As of course. sovereign, as of course. magisterial son. Working with the people is just a part of this magisterial mission that he's doing. He has a lot more work to do than that. <laughs> Putting these new programs into place and guiding those uh, team members beneath him that are working to help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So tell us, Maitreya, Lord Maitreya, do you see some changes uh, coming that we will be able to see within a year or two? Not, not quite, not quite that soon. Not really quite that soon. Uh, two years. What about three? Um, we'll see some in three years, he thinks. On the world peace? He's saying maybe not the world peace yet, but maybe peace in certain areas, more peace in certain areas. In three years? In three years, uh -huh. maybe peace in certain areas. Maybe not the world yet, not the world. Mm -hmm. And what about um, health? I know we were talking about health with Ceres, but um, you, I understand, are doing work with health in different areas than with food and uh, nutrition. Uh, you're doing work as far as um, benefiting people like my poor grand great-grandmother had to bear uh, passing away from yellow fever. You, so he's disease. working with disease and uh, some of the genetic problems that we are suffering today through. So he's also into that area. So there are so many areas that he is working now that we can't even imagine. Mm. Are you working actually with doctors? You're not. You're not. Hmm. He's saying he's working with celestials, other celestials, to help to strengthen the people, to strengthen the bodies, the minds, to actually strengthen the physical in ways that we might not be able to understand. Well, you know, we um, had these visitors the other night and each one gave a gift of light to oh, the world. Will be giving a gift of light. They will be in December. in December. Yes, they will be giving a gift of light in December. They described their gift a little bit to us. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like from what they were saying that this gift of light and the music they were going to give would give more joy to people and inspiration and happiness. So is there some way that your celestials are bringing strength maybe to people, will give them more strength and energy? He's saying definitely that he can do that. He can help do that so um, that the people that are here going through these changes can be strengthened. And Ceres will be working with that too, I believe. Well, not that part. I know, but, but uh, strength and energy through good foods and yes. healthy lifestyle. <laughs> but it's working in a totally different way. 
I see. Uh -huh. So the magisterial mission, part of that will be to strengthen the physical bodies and minds of people. And that the celestial, celestial team members will be uh, helping to affect that. Yes. Yes. I know we had four Melchizedek's and of course we have one here that was one of those four Melchizedek of Truth and they were telling us they were going to try and give people joy and hope and happiness but you were saying that your celestials or certain celestials will be actually trying to strengthen the physical part of people. Well, how interesting. I had never thought of that before. How interesting. You know, it will take a lot of energy to put into place all these new platforms and new social programs and, and uh, to transform this world. Will we see those kinds of changes in three years, Maitreya, when we will see people or people will feel more strength and energy? We will see that in about five years. It will take about five years. But he is actually going to try with the um, celestials that are under him to put forth in the atmosphere in some way for people to absorb some strength from these celestials and we should see that in about five years. There may be some breakthroughs that he can work oh. on that people will begin to understand that will be able to start strengthening them, giving them more energy. He is concerned that people today need more energy. And for that reason, he is also trying to uh, put out messages of ways for us to stop throwing away our energy and deleting it. But that is not his true mission. His true mission is to try and accelerate the energies that we have, give us more energy and more physical strength and more stamina to get through this uh, marvelous transformation. In other words, if we have the strength to make this happen, all these changes, uh, it won't be so hard on us and we can be more joyful. If we have more strength, we don't mind working so hard, you know? That's true. A question I have, considering what you just told us, and by the way, thank you so much. I will be very, very happy to receive more mm -hmm. strength and energy because mm -hmm. I've been asking mm -hmm. for that so that mm -hmm. I can do I can do more work, you know, mm -hmm. getting your message out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will certainly welcome that as I know a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, will. Uh, I wanted to ask, we have been told in previous team meetings and also by series that there will be a requirement, <laughs> we've got five cars in a row here, <laughs> excuse me, that there will be a requirement of people also to do their part and to take responsibility for changing their lifestyles mm -hmm. to gain more health, energy, and strength. So my question would be, what percentage will this acceleration in strength stamina and energy, what percentage of that will be based on messages that come through for people to change their own lifestyle as opposed to you infusing in the atmosphere or accelerating through the atmosphere those changes in energy or those up, up steps in energy and transformation. What percentage of will it be people's responsibilities and what percentage will you and your team be giving us that gift? Well, he's first saying that people today pretty well know 
what things are depleting their energies. They know if they're staying up too late at night, not getting enough sleep. They, they know if they're depleting their energies through unhealthy practices of smoking uh, perhaps or something like that. He's not really involved in all of that. People already know about that. He wants to effect a breakthrough in a higher way than, than people really can even think about today or even imagine. His breakthrough will be given through the atmosphere in some way that, that we today, just like if we were living in 1917, 100 years ago, could not imagine mm -hmm. having a computer or internet. Mm -hmm. He wants to make breakthroughs to give people more energy in their bodies that we really can't even imagine right now. Will it be a lifestyle message or something like no, that? No, no, that's it'll what be, he's trying to say. It'll be like a no. biological technology? Um, we cannot even imagine it imagine. right now. Uh -huh. we, are, we are on the brink of seeing a new civilization coming. And just like if I were a person in 1917, I could not imagine a television, or I could not imagine a jet plane or a cell phone. He's saying that there are ways to make breakthroughs in giving people more energy. And we need that energy, he says, to make the changes and the transformations mm -hmm. that must happen in the world. It takes energy to build an airplane, it takes energy to effect new, new ways of transportation systems and new ways of living. And he wants to give the world those breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you a little information about what uh, one of our teachers at our school told us, that her husband is going to a, um, a convention. There's a gentleman who uh, has developed technologies for what is called biological hacking, or biologic hacking, biological hacking, where there are these machines that, um, that help you change the way that you live through technology. Some technologies that help you with stabilizing your breathing, uh, some technologies mm -hmm. that help your body to be stronger or to exercise your body. Mm -hmm. They're machines. There's a machine that's $20,000. Mm. It gives you a workout. Are we talking about technologies, things like that, that will um, have an effect on the body? A lot of things will have effects on the body, just like uh, Ceres is talking about food and nutrition, which is, of course, important. But he is not involved in that part. He's saying it may have something to do with radio signals to unleash the energy that is already in our body that, that we're not able to uh, use. Oh, unleash energies. Unleash that energies that are already in our bodies. Potential energies. There will be ways celestials will help people to get rid of blockages in the body that are preventing them from having the full capacity of energy that they should have. That right now we don't realize uh, that we have tremendous power within us. It's within us. It, uh, he's not talking about the nutrition or food that we put in our body, and certainly that's important. He's talking about energy that is already in our body, that because of blockages that we are not able to use. I see. Do we have to earn this right to uh, not have Not necessarily. Oh. He's going to try and make breakthroughs for everyone to have the availability of this possible happening to them. That the blockages he can maybe help try to remove. 
that this might be something he can remove will with this, his team. Will this be done on an inner level or like as you say put out in the atmosphere? Mm. An inner level? Or they, would they be working on an inner level to, to uh, remove these blockages? He's not going to um, give any um, radio waves technical um, message about how it is going to be done other than what he said radio waves yeah. and the energy that is already in each person that is already stored in the body that is not being able to be used because of blockages blockages that are on the earth and that are preventing people from really uh, having the power and the energy that they should have. And also to have more of a longevity that they should have. That these blockages also prevent them from being strong enough to continue living a normal happy life for over 70 or 80 years. So the lifespan will increase generally? It, it will because there will be more energy and this is what he feels people should really be thinking about in the future is how to give people more energy but this is one of the most important things that they should be thinking about they're thinking so much about so many other things but really he feels that people need more energy especially to bring about a new civilization in the world so this new civilization will require more energy? Absolutely. Absolutely will. More intellect. More energy being used by the brain. The brain will have to be able to function in a more high-speed way. <laughs> <laughs> high-speed internet. Bit, we're a little <laughs> bit behind. <laughs> the brain is, is going to fall behind here <laughs> unless something happens. But, uh, but energy in all ways for people to have more energy. This is the key to bringing about this new civilization for the world. Is there something that we can do now, Maitreya, to facilitate the beginning of this process? Not until these breakthroughs come about, not really. Mm -hmm. No, no, let's, let's give a little time and see what happens because things will start happening. He and his team are working in so many different areas, social mm -hmm. areas and um, just every area you can possibly think about, political and but also this is one of his prime concerns because so many people on the earth today are struggling just to do the job that they have to do they're struggling just to do that and to envision a new civilization you have to have a strong people in the and world. I notice I notice a lot of people um, with this new generation of children and youth coming up since you know I'm a teacher so I, I see I see it firsthand mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of parents are struggling yes. to raise these kids and work at the same time exactly and deal with all of the uh, changes mm -hmm. in technology mm -hmm. uh, dealing with uh, political and social upheaval of course. with natural disasters I mean mm -hmm. I have parents mm -hmm. come in and say oh goodness I am so overwhelmed mm -hmm. when are we going to hear some good news for once <laughs> while it, you know they're they're hearing about wildfires and hurricanes and they're hearing about things happening in Hollywood and in the political arena while at the same time trying to you know raise their children and both parents working and all that so I can certainly see where mm -hmm. you know some added um, added energy might mm -hmm. be needed mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that technology is not going to slow down I'm sure that technology of is going to continue of course. racing quickly of course with new innovations happening yes. almost every day yes and people today are having a real problem with their health as they begin to age well people men especially are dying earlier 
Well, actually, there are some studies that they are. From heart, uh -huh. heart trouble. That's true. And there are tons That's of cancer. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody That's has cancer true. now, you know, all types well, of Well, not everybody, but fortunately, but, but mean, it certainly is. That's what you hear is, um, in, in all of these Christian and Catholic churches. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. getting cancers of all. Yes. I mean, just in my choir, we've had a couple mm -hmm. people die of cancer, you mm -hmm. know, within the last couple of years. Well, I think that we're going to see some breakthroughs, medical breakthroughs in the, those areas, you know. His area is still a little bit different. It's still a little different. It's still a little bit different. It's still maybe working with the energies that are in the atmosphere uh, to bring them down to try and get rid of some of the blockages in our own bodies so that we can receive some of these energies that mm -hmm. he's trying to bring forth. Maitreya, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me like um, when you were starting to talk about um, unleashing the potential energies within us, it seemed to me like I, I received an image of us being like a seed that we have, that the seed has within it the potential to become, you know, the giant oak tree. Mm -hmm. That we have within us all of these potentials mm -hmm. that we can untap. Yes. Well, of course, Our, that, that power is within you right now. That we can tap into. Yes. The, the problem that he's saying is that these blockages prevent us from being able to utilize that that power and that energy that is already in us. It's already in us. So he is going to be working a lot in that area to bring forth in the atmosphere some of this power and strength and people will be able to have a breakthrough in their lives because they will feel that energy coming into their body but but actually it is already there it's just that they they have not felt it there because of the blockages um, some of the blockages are it's it's not really lifestyle that he's talking about that are causing these blockages it really isn't um, is it because we haven't progressed evolutionarily Yes, yes, it really is. Um, our brains, our bodies are probably uh, way behind the, the quality of uh, internet and technology that we have right now. We're, we're not really keeping abreast quite enough. The people are not because there are, there are people that are keeping abreast of the news and um, have these technological um, devices and so forth. But look how many, th there's probably billions that do not have those even yet. There are people in this, on this earth that do have them. There are, there are still so many that do not that do not have these technical advantages in their countries. Uh -huh. They do not. I mean, we think everybody does, but that's not really true. You have billions that do not have them, these technolo technological advantages. And maybe when you start having more of the world with those in place, maybe then he will be able to put into play his new system. That he will be able to reach everyone in a more physical way. You have got to have every single person keyed in to be able to raise the energies of every single person in the world. You've got to have all those connections in place. So it'll be through te a technological device? Um, no. 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 
but it'll be it'll come through technology in some way I see it'll come through technology in some way in uh -huh. some way uh -huh. maybe we will be able to tap into the energies and the system that he sets up with our technology so could we say that the basic infrastructure is in place or is in the process of being in place? It is not. Okay. It is not. Is it in the process? Has it started? No. So, so it'll be something totally different than what no, we've got it, it will be like a grid work around the world. Oh, a grid. And it will be accessible to every single person on the earth all seven billion people. An energy grid? And they will be able to access it through a technology device. A grid accessible through a technological advi or De device. 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 A, a grid accessible through a... A grid work that will be set up around the planet around the whole planet. A grid work set up around the planet that will, that be, will accessible. be accessible to every person in the world through a device, a technological device. So in a way it is uh, partly through technology but it also is through celestial because without the grid work they wouldn't be able to access it, so the, have access okay, to it. Okay, so the grid work will be set up, set up. by a celestial, celestial team. team. Mm -hmm. But through a device, every person in the world would have to be keyed into it to be able to access it, have access to it. And you have millions of people that are not uh, involved with, with this kind of technology. And we don't even have it yet. It will be a breakthrough. Uh, Lord Maitreya, is there, uh, you said sometime like within the next five years we would start seeing a change in, in health or in energy. Yes. Is that kind of a timetable for like maybe some part of the grid being yes. in place yes. in five years? Yes. Um, I think that we, we should think about electricity. People did not have electricity a few centuries ago and now look how we use it. We're using it for everything. Everything. And even electricity. If you say people can be healed by colors of light, it's healing. Our celestials the other night, what did they say they were going to be giving us? They said they were going to be giving us colored light. Colored light. And some, some of them sound. And some of them sound with it. And here, our Melchizedek of Truth here, right mm -hmm. in front of us, said mm -hmm. that uh, he will be uh, giving us a choir of angels. Yes. Plus white light. Plus white light. So I think that we have to remember that everything is already stored in our bodies, in our planet, in, our, in the space, so forth, Cosmos. that we need to achieve all of these things. It's just being able to access it. So it seems like maybe with technology advancing, there may be some breakthroughs that we would be able to ac access this grid that he is going to be setting up and by doing that that we can have greater energy. Well thank you Maitreya for this. So I think what this is leading to is that it may have to do with light that is already, or energy that's already in the atmosphere. So the grid is already in place, so to speak. No, um, the grid is blocked. The energy is blocked. 
people obviously do not have the energy that he is talking about. We obviously don't see yeah. it. So there's no real tangible grid yet? No. I think what you're trying to say is, well, is the energy out there already? And yes, it is. Well, the energy is, I'm talking about It's this, already out there, and I'm, it's already in our bodies. I'm talking about a structural grid. That to, is to what access. he is going to do. They're going that to... That is what he is going like, to do. Create that or... Create that. Build it. Yes. Have, yes. have you yes. begun building that yet? No, 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 no. But we know that through light you can heal. Mm -hmm. You can heal and through different colors. Well you can actually heal through electricity because I did acupuncture remember in high school mm -hmm. and they put a low frequency current through the, the acupuncture go. needles. There you, know, you I mean, go. There you go. There are uh, there are ways and there there will be breakthroughs. But but he said but you said Maitreya you said radio waves or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That also. So that might be where your sound waves come in. The gifts of sound do. And light. Light's a little bit above sound. So it sound. may not be just light. It's, it's a combination. So we're talking about different frequencies of, yes. of waves. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He will try and set up a grid work around the whole planet so that we will be able to access some of that energy that is already there and we have to uh, clean out the blockages in our own bodies to then link up and use the energy that is in our own bodies mm -hmm. but to do that you have to activate the energy that is in our own bodies I see. and I suppose this is the and they will the they idea. will be doing that mostly yes uh-huh yeah. that and we mm -hmm. will I guess uh, going back to a previous question, uh, mm -hmm. Maitreya, is is there anything we should be doing as humans to, you know, facilitate that process of getting rid of the blockages? Well, this is what he said. He said at this um, meeting that we had not too long ago, he said, I want everyone to be a representative of me. Everyone in the world, all seven billion people. He says he wants them to be his representative. And part of that job of being a representative is to look inside themselves and find those blockages that are sabotaging the energy that they normally should have from them being able to use it. So anything that you can do to stop any bad habits of any kind that destroy energy should be certainly put forth by the individual. That's exactly what I meant about lifestyle. It's just that he is not particularly working in that area. Right. right. Um, we have Ceres here who is. Now she's our, our beautiful, beautiful celestial who wants to help people uh, through nutrition and what uh, they eat and, and all of that and that's why she is here tonight to be with him uh, sharing her message of good health and she's also saying you know to really look at what we're eating that are we eating foods that are going to give us optimal nutrition and optimal energy and by getting rid of foods that are maybe just on our shelf because of shelf life, <laughs> nothing else, to um, don't let those things sabotage the energy that we're going to need to create a new civilization. But Maitreya is not working in that area. He wants people to have a good lifestyle, but that's not quite his um, part. He is having other members of his team work on other parts as far as the inspiration, the joy, the love, spirituality and so forth. But he, he wants everyone to be a representative of him and then in that way you can look at your life, your body, your habits, so forth. And then he's going to build the grid work to try and set up a way that we can access 
access uh, ways to get rid of the blockages that may be left over after the lifestyle has been put into place, the new lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, to break forth and it, maybe the energy will just start gushing forth and let's mm -hmm. hope that that's what will happen that and that is his help too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a gift for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it does take the lifestyle first, right. of course, right. of course, sure. of course. So our other celestials that are putting out the lifestyle message and we're trying to help Ceres put out the lifestyle message that is what is to be done first. I just wanted to ask another question, if I may. Maitreya, let's say that uh, in, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, that, uh, that humans are receiving more energy, more stamina, have better health, have more power and energy, are there measures that will be put in place so that people don't use this increased energy and power for selfish gains, to manipulate others, to do bad things? Will they, when they receive this, will they use it effectively and in a positive way, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, because they will, they will be entrusted with, mm -hmm. with more power and energy. Well, he is going to reiterate what he's told us in a previous message, that he is building spiritual centers all around the earth. And these spiritual centers will be guided by him and his messages, and the celestials in them will be trying to help people to stay within the guidelines yes, that's correct. I remember. of his oh. messages yes. that he's putting forth. And that was one of the um, main um, building projects that he is involved in, is setting up these celestial centers. Yes, first ones in Europe. And the first ones will be in Europe. And by that way that he will be more connected with the people on this planet. After all, he is the sovereign. Yeah. He is the last sovereign of this planet. He wants to be very close to the people and help prevent exactly what you were talking yeah. about because sure. his uh -huh. celestials will be in those temples guiding the people and giving mm -hmm. them inspiration and keeping them they'll in the pathway, so to speak. They'll prevent the misuse. Of, uh, preventing misuse, of course. Of I like course. the positive approach, mm -hmm. I keep them on the pathway. Yes, so in other words, he's already uh, said he's going to put in a plan where he's not just going to come and change the world and have a new civilization and then take off and leave. Yeah. He's uh, putting in a system whereby uh, he can govern this planet effectively. I had another question. I'm, I'm sorry these uh, questions keep coming, but uh, I'm very inspired. Uh, and I thank you so much for, for these gifts that you're giving us and for spending time with us. Thank you so much. I just wanted to make a yeah. point that he was trying to say too, yes, that um, the sound waves are more important in the beginning than almost the light waves because we have to break up these blockages in our bodies. Also we need lower waves to kind of come in and mm -hmm. the, obliterate the, the blockages. The light, the light will be used at the same time but, in the, but in the beginning it will probably be more the sound, the radio waves and sound waves that will be creating ways to relieve those blockages in the body to release that power and then the grid work that is set up will make it accessible to everyone on the planet. Well, Matreya wanted to speak again. Yes, please. Um, can you tell us the time? Because I don't want to go over. Uh, 11.29. So we began at 10. Mm -hmm. 10.02, 10.03. Matreya, you want to speak?
uh, Maitreya says that he doesn't want us to forget that many members of his team, including our Melchizedek of truth, are also working on the hearts of men. Mm. And sometimes we get too involved with the nuts and bolts. <laughs> so he doesn't want us to forget that the Melchizedeks are bringing their spiritual programs of hope and giving people new ways of finding salvation and giving them a new path to take are also a main part of the magisterial mission to change the people. Creating new energy for them is important but also they are working on their hearts to bring them joy and hope and again the energy as you say can be used for good or bad so we have to remember that uh, the celestials are also um, trying to bring them messages on an inner level that they do exist that the celestials really do have a wonderful plan for them even after they leave this earth even after all these wonderful changes happen that we still will be in a system where we do leave and that we will have a wonderful life with the local universe father close by and the ten-year plan is uh, of the prime importance and that is more important than all the energy that mankind can get in the world it's more important to join the ten-year plan of the local universe father and mother pray every day to them thank them pray for world peace so that all of this can come about and that is all he has to say Universal Father, God above, Heavenly Father, Lord of love, we praise you. Father, on this beautiful day of fond embrace, we pray, give us reassurance of your powerful love, healing comfort from above, yeah. Elucidate our minds, open our hearts to your powerful truth. We want to wear your presence like a smile that glows across the universe. Father, God above, Heavenly Father, Lord of love, we praise you. Yes, we praise you. 
Universal Father, God above, Heavenly Father, Lord of love, we thank you, yes, we thank you. We praise you, yes, and we thank you. Universal Father, on this beautiful day, a closer bond we pray. Be a guiding light to our earthly quest. Be with us every day. Penetrate our lives, lift our souls with your powerful truth. We want to wear your presence like a smile that glows across the universe. Deity everlasting, you change the world, change the world. Tre